Welcome back folks. Today I want to install this wall mount infrared heater made by Heatstorm. I'm going to be putting this in my furnace room where it gets a little bit too cold and my tankless hot water heater can sometimes freeze up and I want to try to prevent that. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this and then get it installed. So this is a quartz infrared heater with a blower motor inside. This also has a thermostat, so you can set this to a specific temperature and it'll try to get the room up to that temperature. And once it gets there, it'll shut off. And this also mounts to your wall. It's got little keyholes right here. And one thing that's really nice is if you don't wanna mount this to the wall, is it's got a nice little carrying handle right here. And it also has a cord storage right here. So if you need to pack this up and take it somewhere, you can just stick the cord and the remote control right inside this compartment. Now this is a 1500 watt unit. That seems to be the highest that you can really find whenever it comes to a 110 volt or 120 volt outlet. So they claim that this will actually put out 5,200 BTUs. So it should keep a small or medium sized room relatively warm. Now this unit is 19 inches long, 13 inches high and four inches wide. So it's pretty compact and this should fit perfect on the wall right next to my hot water heater. Now, according to the manufacturer, this weighs 8.45 pounds and that feels about right. It's really lightweight. So since it's so lightweight, I have no issues having to use drywall anchors if I can't find a stud right where I need to put this. So this does have a rating of 44 to 47 decibels whenever the fan is running and that's pretty quiet. So you shouldn't have any trouble having this in a room even if you have a TV in that room and you're trying to listen to it. This shouldn't be so loud that you can't hear the TV over it. So this particular model is Wi-Fi enabled and that's one of the reasons why I went with it. They do sell a unit that is not Wi-Fi enabled if you're not needing the smart feature. But anytime that I'm away from my home, I wanna be able to check the temperature of that room and be able to turn this unit on and off as needed. And it does have an app that it comes with that you'll just download to your smartphone and it conveniently will work with Amazon Alexa or the Google Assistant. Now this does come with a little remote control, which is nice if you're not gonna use the smart app and you're gonna be in the same room as the device, this little remote will be really handy to be able to turn the temperature up or down or turn the machine on or off. So now that we know a little bit about the heater, let's go check out the space that I'm gonna put this in and get this thing mounted up and see how well it works. And each keyhole is exactly three inches from the edge. So I should be able to kind of tighten here to do this. Right around there. Now it came with four drywall mounts, so we'll go ahead and put these upper two in, and then once we get the unit on there, we should be able to install the lower ones. That's tricky in that corner. Now I can go ahead and finish up the bottom ones to get it fully mounted to the wall. Now it comes with these little brackets here and they just slide into the spots down on the bottom. These things are a little tricky to put in. You just have to kind of put a lot of pressure on them, but they'll click into place just like that. Now this typically comes with a template to be able to hang this really easily, but the one that I bought was an Amazon return and uh, it didn't have the template. So I'm just kind of winging it. To be able to put in the drywall anchors, I'm just gonna put them in just like that. And there we go, it's fully mounted. Now we're ready to turn it on and give it a try. It looks like it turned on. And we should be able to just power it up. Okay, now there's a Wi-Fi button here. It says I need to hold this for five seconds. Okay, I got it by searching for it. It should automatically pop up whenever you go into this searching mode uh, after you get this flashing and you make sure your Bluetooth is turned on and then it discovered it. So we're just gonna add that 
right there and then I'll just need to enter in my Wi-Fi information. Okay, now it looks like it's being added. This may take just a minute. All right, I got the app up and running. It wasn't too bad getting it connected to your Wi-Fi. You'll just need to know your Wi-Fi uh, password and then also the name of your Wi-Fi connection and then it should connect right up. As you can see here, it's showing me the current temperature is 65 and that's what we're seeing right up there. And then I've got it actually set to 62. See how quick this thing reacts. So it reacts really fast. I was changing it on there and it changes almost instantly on there. So the app seems to be working pretty well, allowing me to change that back and forth. Okay, so on the app, instead of using the actual screen up there, you can do all these controls on the screen, but on the app, you can set the power mode to be low, where it will basically run the fan at, at the lowest speed that it possibly can. Or you can set it to auto to where it will change the variable of the fan speed as needed. And then, of course, high would be running the fan as high as it can possibly go. I'll probably just leave it on auto. That way the unit can control it a little bit more accurately. Then you can change the, the display brightness. You can see it change right up there to all the way off if you didn't want to use that power to 10%, 50% brightness to 100% brightness. You can also power the unit on and off with this, which is a really nice feature. So I don't need to run this whenever it's above freezing. I can just basically leave this off and whenever it gets below freezing, I can simply come into the app, turn it on, and it'll turn on the unit from no matter where I'm at, which is a really nice feature in case I'm away from the house, I can crank this thing on and not have to worry about having somebody come out to the house to turn it on. But you can switch your units between uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then you can also set up a timer if you wanted to. So if you only wanted this to run for say an hour, you could go ahead and set that timer up. But this is pretty cool little unit. I'm actually really happy with how easy this is to set up and how well this fan actually works in here. It actually puts out some good heat. And then one thing that's really cool I noticed while I was standing here kind of messing around with the app, once this thing kicks on and it starts blowing out heat, it will kick the, the actual heater element off when it reaches the temperature but the fan will continue to blow until all that heat is out of the unit. So this thing isn't left hot without that fan running. The fan is always running whenever the heating element is on and then whenever the heating element is hot at all, that fan continues to run. So overall, so far, I'm pretty impressed with this. And it also is a pretty, pretty good looking little unit. Looks pretty uh, well fitted in here inside this uh, furnace room. So there you go, that is the infrared heater from Heatstorm. I will have to give you guys an update as it gets colder, as we go through January and February, to let you guys know exactly how well this thing is holding up and how it's actually working with the app and being able to actually use it remotely. That's one of the big things that I'm really excited about with this, not having to worry about having to be at the house to turn this machine on and off. It's just ready to go inside that app. So if you guys like this video, I'll put some links below to one of these heaters, the Wi-Fi version and the non-Wi-Fi version. And if you guys use those links, it does help out the channel. But as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.